Hello and welcome. Thank you very much for joining to our today's session. Today our webinar will be about the allergen rapid testing solutions and introduction of the Sensis strip lateral flow devices. Cristina Romero Gonzalo, our product manager for allergen testing um, at Eurofins Technologies, will be guiding you through into the details of uh, allergen risk management and introducing the product uh, and our solutions uh, to you. I'm Gabor Kohut, the regional sales manager at Eurofins Technologies, responsible for Europe. Today, we will start uh, a quick introduction we will speak about uh, the requirements in food allergy and labeling and food management, which will be followed by the introduction of the SASI strip, strip lateral flow product line. After that, we will speak about the performance and the results interpretation and we'll introduce you our new LFD reader. At the end of the session, we will make sure to allocate enough time for questions and answers. And I would like to ask you if you have any questions during the session, please feel free to type into the chat box and uh, all your questions will be answered at the end of the uh, uh, end of the presentation. We will do our best to answer as much questions as possible uh, during the, uh, the time. Just to start with a very quick introduction of Eurofins Technologies. Eurofins Technologies is a, is a new division of the Eurofins Group. We are um, a truly independent diagnostic test kit manufacturing division of the group. Our goal is to be among the global providers of uh, diagnostic test kits and laboratory consumables and instrumentation platform supporting the testing in food, feed, environmental, biopharma, and clinical markets. We have three divisions, industrial solutions covering the food, feed, and environmental safety business, animal health solutions giving you tools for veterinary diagnostic testing. Meanwhile, clinical diagnostic is focusing on the IVD market by human diagnostics. As I told you, our goal is to provide you comprehensive testing solutions, which covers the whole supply chain of fruit production from farm to fork. And as we go on this, uh, this chain, the finished products or production and processing have an increasing attention to the allergen management, risk management, and therefore the interest testing solutions for allergens are becoming more and more important. And with that, I would like to pass the stage uh, to Christina to continue um, the presentation and guiding you in this topic forward. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Gabor. And thank you very much to all of you for attending this webinar. So we are going to start, as Gabor has mentioned, with the requirements in food allergen labeling and food management. So I always like to start with this slide in order to know what is the aim of the uh, product that we are currently developing and manufacturing. So the, the main objective of this product is just to make the life easier and safer for the food allergy and celiac disease patients. So at this point, it's very important to know the difference between a food allergy and celiac disease. Food allergy is an abnormal response uh, by the body's immune system when somebody intakes a specific food stuff. Sometimes this response could be mild, but sometimes it could lead to anaphylaxis and even could lead to death. On the other hand, the celiac disease is an autoimmune disease that happens 
when the ingestion of gluten leads to damage in the small intestine. So as you can see, these are two different, completely different diseases. It is estimated that celiac disease affects 100 people worldwide and approximately between 200 and 500 of adults and 4 at 100 percent of children are affected by food allergies today. So we, you can see that we are talking about uh, high values of percentages. In addition, the global food allergy and testing market is driven by the increasing number of food allergies reported to medical establishment. So it means that this percentage values is even increasing every day. Currently, the only treatment for food allergies or celiac disease is to maintain a strict allergen-free diet during the whole life. But allergens may be present as an ingredient and also inadverted via cross-contamination, for example, when sharing food processing machines. So it means and it implies that the traceability of the food production process has to be done from the raw material to the final product. So the food industry should identify all the food ingredients, components and additives and has to monitor any potential cross-contamination. And the best way to accomplish these activities is the arrangement on an allergen management program which includes an adequate analysis in the production site. And what is an allergen management in the production site? So allergen management embodies the process policies and practice that contribute to the control of allergen within a food business. To be able to uh, apply an effective allergen management, it should cover all aspects of the food product supply chain from sourcing raw material through manufacturing and packaging and to the finished product that has, is going to be sold to another business or to the end consumer. For implementing an effective uh, allergen management, it involves apply a documented systematic approach to identify and control all the allergens that could be involved in this uh, production process. And two, Key aspects of the allergen management are the cleaning and the allergen risk review. The cleaning includes all the procedures to manage raw material spill, in cleaning the facility, the equipment, the tools to prevent allergen cross contact that could be in play. <clears throat> so cleaning validation and verification can be monitored by surface or rinse water analysis, which in fact is a allergen management analysis in production site. The allergen risk review is the allergen statute of a, food, of a food product. It identifies the presence of allergens that are intentionally formulated into a product and in addition quantifies, it means on-site analysis as well, the risk of allergens which may be unintentionally present by cross-contact allergens. So with this slide, I want to show you which are the 14 allergens that are listed in the European regulation and they, they should be labeled in all kinds of packed foodstuffs. Regarding the uh, re regulated limits, there are only limits uh, regulated for gluten in the Codex Alimentarius in a way that uh, only below 20 ppm you can label a product as gluten-free. With the rest of the allergens, there are no regulated limits. But there is what is called the VITAL program, the Voluntary Incidental Trace Allergen Labyrinth, that was developed to help the food producer in order to present the allergen advice in a constantly way for the allergen consumer and trying to avoid the indiscriminate use of the precautionary allergen labeling. You know, the may contain. The may contain labeling is not helpful at all for the uh, allergic patients. The VITAL program defines the reference dose, which are the milligram protein level below which only the most sensitive of individuals in the allergic population are likely to experience an adverse reaction. So these reference dose are not mandatory, it's only a voluntary decision of the company. But more and more the industry tends to follow this reference dose to implement and design the internal quality control in, into the company. So it's important to take them into account. So now we are going to go into the tail in the Census Strip LFD product line itself. 
First of all, I would like to show you the portfolio of Aletheon ELISA of European technology that we have currently available. As you can see, we cover almost all the allergens that are included in the European regulation, excepting for celery, which usually is uh, analyzed by PCR, and sulfides that as not being an allergen usually is analyzed uh, as well by a different technique, like HPLC or enzymatic assay. So the objective of this um, new product line is to build um, a comprehensive LFD product line equivalent to the ELISA one that I have just shown you, which covered the needs of the industry for screening tested. We are talking about rapid and easy to use assays with improved quality compared with the competitors and the current one and with an homogeneous design. So this new product line is the perfect tool to control potential cross-contamination with food allergens at immediate an advantage in reducing the time which is needed to release a food product batch to the market because as mentioned it is a fast and reliable in-house testing with only a few minutes of incubation time it provides a very easy to use technique for an adequate control at different stage of the food manufacturing process across food matrices wind water and equipment into the factory so all the kits include the all the necessary and ready to use material to be able to perform 20 individual analysis per kit. So it means that there is no need to acquire any additional disposable material. So every kit includes all the vials and the tubes, of course the reagents and the disposable pipettings, uh, spatulas, the swabs, and even the racks for the tubes and the vials are included as well. Okay, so now we are going to explain uh, the procedure of the kits in order to perform the analysis. So the first step, as always, is the sample preparation. So for solid and liquid samples, we first need to transfer the homogenized sample to the extraction tube and add three milliliters of extraction buffer. Shake for one minute and let the solid to sediment. And then, as a last step, just transfer 0.3 milliliter of supernatant to the reaction vial. In the case of rinse water, it's even simpler. You just need to adjust the pH of the sample to 7 and then transfer the 0.3 milliliter of sample into the reaction vial. And for swabbing sample, you need to add the extraction solution into the extraction tube and moisten the swab by dipping into the tube. Then swap the mark area by using the cross hatch technique that you can see here while rotating the tip at the same time in order to get as much sample as possible. Then place the swab into the tube and shake for one minute. And then just the last step as in the other kind of sample, just transfer 0.3 milliliter supernatant into the reaction vial. <clears throat> So in order to have a general overview of the procedure, you can see here that after the sample preparation and transfer to the incubation vial, you only need to wait three minutes to place the strip into the vial. Then wait five minutes and you can evaluate the result of the strip. So now we are going to see how can we do this evaluation and interpretation of the result. So what you are going to see once you have the results, there are certain different possibilities. So there are two lines, the control lines and the test line. So in case you see only the control line, it means that the sample is negative. In case you see two lines, one and the control one and other in the test, then the sample should be reported or should be considered as positive. And in any case that you cannot see the control line, it means that the result is invalid because something has happened during the during running the, the assay or whatever, but you have to repeat it. And for the result interpretation, there are two possibilities. You can do a semi-quantitative or a quantitative uh, interpretation. So for the semi-quantitative interpretation, we include an evaluation card in every kit that is uh, similar to the uh, image, that uh, the graphic that you can see here. So, uh, this evaluation uh, card uh, is for a better distinguish between the negative sample and the borderline and the very high content uh, allergens. 
So what you have to do is just to compare the intensity color of your test lines with the different increments of the color card. So if the intensity color of your test line is lower than increment three, so the sample should be treated as negative. And any results higher or similar to increment three should be treated as positive. But in this case, the evaluation card may give you a semi-quantitative result because you can decide if, or you can check if the sample is have a high content of allergen or, as mentioned, is in the borderline. And the other possibility is just to perform a quantitative interpretation of the result by using a reader. So the reader that we are validating with our census strip is the rapid scan st 5 e which is a standalone European technology reader used for the analysis of the lateral flow test of all the group. So we are using the same reader for the mycotoxin and water analysis manufactured with different companies within the group. So the idea is just to have one solution for all European technologies customers. So the validation of this reader with the, with the LFD um, uh, allergens will be available in April 2021 when we will launch the second wave of products that I will explain later. So now I'm going to explain you how to use this reader that you will see this is very very easy to uh, uh, very easy to use and very friendly um, interface so first of all you need to load the method that you are going to use so just press the load method uh, button in the screen and then insert the qr code in trade and press the button to load the method that's all you need to do so then once you have the method loaded then you can read the strip. So just press the button read strip in the first screen. And then you need to select the kit from the list of the methods that you have already uploaded. Then you have to select a deduction factor from all the available options that you have and fill the sample name. So for example, in this case, I put cake mix like if it was a FAPA sample, for example, and just press the button of Start Analysis. Once you have done this, then you will get this screen. So you get the sample ID, cake mix, the result, uh, with a, so a quantified result in PPM or PPB, PPM depending on the, of the analyte, and uh, you will see, you will have an image of the strip. So with the results, you have access to a reading database. You can print a report in case you have a Wi-Fi connection. And once you have, you have it, you can proceed to the next analysis. So as mentioned, it is a very, very easy to use a reader for the strips in order to get a quantitative result. OK, so uh, regarding the portfolio, we have already launched the first wave of products in December 2020. So we have already available kits for the analysis of peanut, almond, crustacean, and mustard. So you can see here the different sensitivity values for food matrix, swabbing, and rinse water, which are really low compared with some other of the market. And in addition, you can see uh, exactly what uh, allergen or what is exactly detecting the kit. So sometimes the kit is detecting a specific protein, like is the case of the tropomyosin in, in the crustacean kit. And in some other cases, the, the kit is detecting the total allergen or the total commodity or the total protein. So these are the kits uh, currently available. And uh, four additional kits will be available in the second wave uh, that will be launched in April 2021. The second wave will include casein, egg, soy, and cashew. And here again, you have the sensitivity of values for uh, different matrices, food, swabbing, and wind water, as well as the, the kind of analyte that is detecting the kit. So just as a summary of the main characteristic of this product line, the kits are provided with all the necessary material in order to perform 20 individual analyses per kit. 
They are a very easy to use lateral flow format, giving a rapid and accurate on-site test. They have high sensitivity and specificity thanks to the internal design of the kit and the combination of the antibodies as we are using. They have the possibility of semi-quantitative or quantitative results, depending on your needs. They have a low pricing comparing with, with the competitors. And of course, they have the commercial alternative support that we offer to all uh, our kits in European technology. So here you can see the email address where you could place orders or ask for any additional information you may require about this product line or any product related with Aerofins technology. So thank you so much for attending this webinar. Now um, you can feel free to ask your question uh, by writing them in the chat of the webinar and we will proceed to read them and as well as good as possible. Thank you so much to all of you. Thank you very much, Christina, for the great presentation. And I see the questions are arriving to the chat box. But may I be a little bit selfish and ask my question first until um, uh, there are more questions arriving. So you mentioned that uh, there was the first wave in, um, in December and the second is coming in April. Are you planning further um, uh, implementations throughout this, this year? And if yes, what are the coming uh, products? Yes, the, the, the plan, the idea is that we will have third wave in September. Uh, this third wave includes four kits as well, uh, which we are sure that will be include gluten, that we know that these are one of the main of the market, and total milk. Uh, and in addition, uh, we have no exactly dates for the next one, but the, the final idea is just to have a whole portfolio as comprehensive as the ELISA one that we currently have. So there will be more waves in the future. But the, the, the third one in September is for sure. It's already planned. Thank you very much. And that sounds really great. Okay, so um, still a lot of questions are coming. Let me start with, uh, let's say, the first one. Um, we have uh, actually question, two questions about the accuracy of the method and the limit of detection, if you may repeat this part. Okay, so the, the limit of detection is the sensitivity that I've shown you in the, in the, in the presentation. So you can see that uh, this, uh, the, the sensitivity of this limit of detection uh, uh, refers to the different matrices, food, uh, swabbing, and rinse water. And uh, in general, uh, we, are, uh, we are getting very good limit of detection with the combination of antibodies that we are currently using. So uh, they are as good, even sometimes as good as the, the ELISA. Uh, so the, the, the accuracy and the sensitivity in this case are, are rather good. Thank you. Then, um, are all products approved by any regulatory, regulatory body? Not yet. Not yet because they, 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 we are talking about a very new line. So uh, I, up to now we have not uh, certification, you mean maybe AUSC or wherever. But depending on the uh, evolution of the line and the market, so uh, maybe this could be something that we could study or we could uh, we could decide, and maybe not for all the uh, um, uh, the products, but uh, for example for for more of the, the the most demanded one, like for example gluten or some other, this is something that may, we, we could make in the future. Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, we received a few questions about the price of the kits. I encourage um, uh, to, to send a request uh, uh, for a quote either via our website or the uh, technologies.hu at eurofins.com email address. Uh, then we have a question about uh, the LFD reader, um, if it will be used also for mycotoxin. Yes. The, the, in fact, the, the, the reader is already validated for all the mycotoxin LFD uh, or kits from the group. Uh, uh, the, the mycotoxin kits are manufactured by, by a different company within the European Technology Group. 
and the, the reader is validated for their kits as well for the water uh, analysis kit from a, a third company. So the, the idea is that you can use the same reader for the different kits from European Technology. So, so you can use it for a, a mycotoxin, allergens, and pesticide and different uh, analyzes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Um, do you may, may know that um, uh, will then be those applications uh, qualitative or quantitative? The uh, the application of the uh, the quantitative application uh, with the reader will be available in yes. in April. Yeah. Uh, the semi quantitative okay. is already available because it's a, it's an evaluation card which is included into every kit. So the moment you receive the kit, the evaluation card is into it and you can perform the semi-quantitative evaluation of the well at this moment, yes. Yeah. Great. Then, uh, will ELISA allergen testing in the labs be obsolete when using Sensitrip? That's an interesting um, No, I think that these are two different techniques uh, with different objectives. So, uh, from my point of view, the ELISA technique it uh, gives you a, a kind of results with a curve to, uh, that uh, should be very adequate for um, food um, laboratories, uh, mm -hmm. food uh, industrial laboratories. But uh, I think that the main objective of these uh, lateral flow devices is uh, the industry uh, in order to perform a, qu a quick screening uh, on site. So I think it's the, the best um, aim of the best use of this kit is that for the industry not to be in the need of send all the samples to an external laboratory. So you can perform your internal quality control um, and then only send some samples to external laboratory for confirming. So in addition, when you are able to do an on-site analysis, you have more leeway in order to see, in, in case of a positive sample, where the problem could be. Because you can, uh, you have the opportunity to perform the analysis in different places of the manufacturing process. So you, you can know, you, or you can detect the problem um, sooner and know exactly where the contamination uh, may have happened. So uh, I think that uh, both technologies are complementary uh, in, in fact, should be used uh, together uh, with the collaboration between the, the industry and the agrofood laboratory in order to get the more uh, accurate and safer results. Thanks, Christina. Then, um, how do these kits compare to other kits in the market in terms of um, uh, in terms of function, quality, price? Okay, in, in terms of price, I think that we have a lower price compared with the, with the comparator. Um, the, regarding the accuracy, regarding the, the um, sensitivity, the, the sensitivity is lower. And uh, in many cases, okay, there are different kits in the market, but in general, they are very easy to use. So the, the steps are very easy to perform and they include all the necessary material. So there is no need to buy anything else um, apart from the kit. So uh, I think that, um, and of course, uh, one of the most important or key points with this kit is the possibility of the quantification with, with the reader. So I think that they offer several advantages compared with the, with the current kits of the market. Okay. Then a question about the OEC uh, validation. Are we planning? Yeah, it's the, it's the, the same that I, we have mentioned uh, before. Uh, right now, we have not the AOC uh, certification, but this is something that uh, we can uh, decide in the in the future. Uh, we have not currently planned it because uh, it depends on the not for not not for all the kids, but probably for the more uh, demanded ones, it could be something very interesting to do. For example, for gluten. But uh, the, the gluten kit will be available probably with the third wave. So we still need to have the kit available and then decide the next step with the mm -hmm. certification. 
but the, but it, clearly this is something that that we 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 can think about and uh, we can evaluate. All right. So how, how do you ensure the absence of matrix cross effect uh, with those tests? Okay, so the, there is some uh, cross uh, reactivity with the, these tests, the same uh, that there is with the ELISA. So uh, in this sense, uh, both um, have the same behavior uh, because in many cases we are using some similar uh, antibodies. So, uh, but the, the values of this cross reactivity are so low and you have to go into detail in any kit in order to see which are these values and which are the um, uh, the cross reactivity with uh, another, another commodities? But uh, it's the same with the with the light. There is no difference. Okay, is the kit also viable for partially hydrolyzed proteins? Okay, now the. Uh, the kits uh, are not designed for hydrolysis samples. No, no, not specifically designed for hydrolysis samples because the because of the internal design of the kit. So, uh, it's, uh, as mentioned, the behavior is similar to the ELISA we have right now available. All right. Then, which country are you based in? Okay, we are based in uh, worldwide, <laughs> right? <laughs> European technology, uh, 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 probably you even Gabor, may answer this question better than me, but uh, uh, we have um, uh, um, companies uh, in Asia Pacific, we have in uh, uh, Australia, we have of course uh, different countries in Europe, United States, South America, so uh, worldwide. You have, you have yeah. to go, get into the uh, website of European Technologies and find the, the 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 better one for you, depending on your uh, of your the place your 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 place. Yes, yes, indeed. So, um, I mean, the R&D centers and the excellence centers for allergen testing is located in in uh, Spain and in Germany, and the manufacturing hub in in Budapest. Just to be more specific regarding the allergens, but you are absolutely right, Christina. So the best uh, way to find out our uh, footprint is, is just via website and, and feel free to get in touch with us um, on, on one of those email addresses or phone numbers you will see there. All right. Um, can we use this rapid test as a part of HACCP system? Yes. Yes, this is part of the... Uh... Uh, the, the, this uh, uh, system uh, includes uh, analysis control, so uh, um, can be used as a screening uh, an in-house uh, technique for the internal quality control of the company. Probably, as we have mentioned before, you need to send some uh, samples from some batches to external accredited laboratory if you are, if the factory or the industry is not accredited. But you can use it as, uh, as a part of this of your internal quality control. Yeah. Okay. Then will this reader work uh, with GMOs? Uh, Meaning uh, GMO strips, probably. <laughs> yeah, I think that is validated with GMOs. Is the GMOs is from another company, but if not, uh, this is something that we it's probably is in process. Yes, yes. So, um, Eurofins Amar um, is the uh, the excellent center uh, for the GMO strips, and the goal for a reader is to have one instrument working with all the possible lateral flow devices uh, we are developing, and uh, a lot. Uh, so, stay tuned. A um, lot of applications and a lot of uh, ads will will come uh, to this uh, solution. Okay, so can the uh, lateral flow uh, device line be used to certify food free of allergen? Yes, yes, the, the, this is the, the idea. Yes, you, you can use the, um, if you want to label a product as um, peanut free or uh, you can use uh, this uh, device. Uh, if you use the quantify uh, 
possibilities, so even better. But uh, you can, uh, if this is a, an internal quality control that you can use. Uh, I always recommend, as, as, as it is a screening test, uh, just to, uh, uh, to send some samples from your production site to a sonar lab. But uh, you can use it for a, a negative sample to, to label your products as, as allergen free. <clears throat> Thanks. So, will the strip test need to be validated for each sample matrix? Or uh, what sample matrices uh, have been validated? So, the, 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 um, the strips have been validated. You, you, should, you should go in every case. Because uh, the strip have been validated, uh, every strip or every allergen with the different matrices. So uh, in case uh, you you can ask what kind of samples uh, do you want to uh, to analyze or to apply this kit. So uh, you can get uh, the validation report from us where you can see exactly in which matrices or food matrices have been uh, validated uh, apart from the uh, wind water and surface sample. So uh, if you have a different one or a very complicated one, maybe you should make some uh, additional testing in order to confirm there's no uh, specific matrix effect. Uh, or maybe just to discuss with us in, in case we can uh, make some checking. But uh, the kit has been already validated with different matrices. So uh, my recommendation is just to go first to the validation report of every kit and see exactly uh, what matrices have been validated. Yes. And then uh, how can we get the validation report? Okay, so yes, you can write to uh, European Technologies at Hungary uh, by the website, or I may, and I think that probably this is the, the warehouse and the center for the, all the information, and uh, write to, uh, to me directly to, in order to get this, this kind of information, the instruction for use validation report and uh, in general. Okay, thanks. Can the customer write uh, on uh, their product label gluten-free if uh, they use the lateral flow kit, will they use the lateral flow kit for gluten and it, it doesn't sh show any contamination? Yes, once we have the lateral flow uh, kit available, uh, if uh, the, the limit of detection, uh, of, as the limit of detection will be below 20 ppm, if you get a negative sample with these strips, you can label your 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 um, produce as gluten free. But uh, as mentioned, with any screening test, uh, I always like to recommend that uh, not every sample, of course, because you are doing your internal control, but just to forward some uh, some samples from uh, different batches to external laboratory in order to. Uh, a confirmation. Super. Then a question about hook effect, where a high positive uh, sample acts if negative. Have we challenged the allergen LFD test uh, with a very, very high level of allergens? Yes, in, in some cases, uh, when the, the content of the allergen is very high, uh, you, you, we have observed some kind of hook effect that happens with with all the lateral flow devices. So, but it is reflected in the uh, in the structure for use. So you can see in every allergen uh, from which value uh, you can observe this hook effect. So you will see if you go into the tail in uh, in every case that this uh, the concentration has to be very very high in order to uh, get this hook, hook effect. But it is written and reported in the instruction for use of every kit. So, great. Then can, uh, can affect or interfere the food matrix, uh, percentage of sugar or fat, of, uh, or the accuracy of the results? Okay, so this is similar to what we have mentioned before, that the, the kits have been validated with different matrices. So if you are uh, going to analyze a specific matrix, a very complicated one with the high content of polyphenols or whatever, so uh, maybe in this case, um, should be good to do uh, some uh, testing. 
but if the sample has been already validated uh, in the during the validation process of the kit so it should be no problem Okay. So my, my recommendation in any case, mm -hmm. if if any of the any user or if any of you have some doubt about the matrix you are going to use, just come to us. Just uh, come to us as, and ask any doubt or question you may have, so we can clarify. Okay, you have no problem. You can use the kit with with this matrix, or maybe we can test for you, or maybe mm -hmm. we can do whatever. So this is what I wanted to meet with with them. Commercial and technical support. So I think this is one of the uh, important or main points of European technologies that uh, we like to or we want to offer you an, a specific and individual support for your kind of sample or for your specific problem or a concern. So just come to us any any moment you you feel uh, you don't feel confident or you need to ask if you have any doubt. Yeah. I can just just confirm this. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah. Then uh, one of our participants uh, writes that the kit uh, um, she uses at the moment have some problem uh, when uh, she tries to detect allergen gluten on not clean surface, so dusty surface. Um, do we have? some problem of detection of not clear surfaces or have we tested or do, do we have any any ideas about dealing with this kind of problem uh, okay so uh, the the kits have been validated in in swab samples that are taken from surfaces and um, i think that usually the surfaces are being clean uh, because the, the the idea of the um, of the test is just to check that after cleaning, there are no residues of allergen in them. So uh, I don't think that we have especially uh, analyzed dirty surfaces in order to check if this could interfere with the, with the sample. But I don't really see the point on analysis exactly a dirty surface because usually what you want to know is that you have performed correctly the cleaning. So, um, but okay, this in this case, this is something that we could check if this uh, uh, could give some additional value to uh, uh, to this customer, in, in especially. Yeah. Thanks. Then, will the gluten uh, LFD use the R5 antibody? Uh, no, the, there will be a different uh, mono, uh, uh, yeah monoclonal antibody. But uh, this antibody will be, um, as, uh, as you probably know, uh, one of the companies of the group uh, are using the R5 monoclonal antibody for the LISA. So the, the LISA we have available includes this antibody. So what we are going to do during the validation of the uh, gluten LFD is just to validate it uh, comparing with the R5. So the results uh, obtained with the new LFD will be completely comparable to the R5. Yeah. Thanks. Then you, Christina, uh, recommended sending the samples to the lab for confirmation. Which technique uh, would be used in the lab to confirm the uh, lateral flow device results? ELISA. Yes, usually ELISA. I think that for the analysis of allergens, uh, uh, unless there, there, there is no other technique, and some of them are analyzed by PCR, uh, usually the, uh, the agrofood laboratories use the ELISA for, uh, for perform the analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, they can use sometimes the PCR. If they have some doubts with the ELISA result, they, they use the PCR as a additional confirmation. But uh, the, um, the accredited laboratories, they have accredited the ELISA technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Finally, a question on uh, I think on on more on the Elizas uh, that uh, the rinsing water. So, is it possible to to analyze the rinse water uh, or the washing step with with the Eliza? Uh, yes, it, it is possible to do it with the Eliza as well, uh, but uh, we have not done a specific validation with this uh, rinse water with the Eliza. 
because uh, usually it's, um, the application of the LFD in rinse water is more clear. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a um, the rapid one. I mean, the, uh, uh, the object of this LFD is just to, to check if the cleaning has been done correctly and to check the, uh, the rinse water in the production uh, site. But the ELISA could be used as well, but, but it's not exact, uh, precisely validated with it. Okay, thanks a lot. Then I think I know um, questions are still coming. So regarding the semi-quantitative evaluation, what is the correlation between uh, increments and PPM? Okay, uh, for this it's important to go to uh, the validation report of every kit because uh, in the validation report the, all the testing has been done by giving the report the results uh, comparing with the evaluation card with the different increments. So the, uh, in order to be able to give a more accurate semi-quantitative result, you should go in every case to the validation report. And you will see which is the correlation in every kit between, uh, it's not exactly one because we are talking about semi-quantitative as always. Yes, the, for the quantitative we need the reader, there is no other option. But with the validation report, you can give a more accurate, a semi-quantitative result by comparing with the results uh, reported in this validation. All right. Are you supplying these kits directly to the industry or is there an interco setup in place? Uh, no, the, the, you, you can buy directly to European Technologies. Uh, wherever you are in industry or laboratory or uh, no, no problem with this. So it's, it's fully available, indeed. Then, um, do we need a special room? So um, the participant who is asking is working in a mill uh, and need to analyze soya. And uh, does she need to do something uh, with the infrastructures to avoid cross-contamination? Okay, the, the idea of the kit is just to be able to use it on site. So the procedure is very simple. So it's true that it's good not to, uh, I mean, uh, not to get some uh, particles of allergens uh, getting into the tubes. But if you do it, uh, you can do it in the production site. So this is the idea that you don't need like in, in ELISA or in other technologies, you don't need a special area uh, completely clean or something similar in order to perform the analysis. You can do it in the production site. Always with some kind of um, care about not uh, just, uh, just as mentioned, just not some particles, for example, of uh, soya falling down, in the, falling into the, the, uh, the tubes uh, at the moment you are doing the analysis, but but you can do it on site because it's very easy to to do. Great. Uh, what is the shelf life of the kids? It's right now. It's twelve months from the manufacturer date. <clears throat> okay. Do the instructions recommend any positive control testing to make sure the test can pick up the allergen? It's not necessary, but uh, uh, any, um, any confirmation or any additional control is always good to do. To do. So, but uh, the, the, we have not uh, included into instruction for use uh, this indication. But uh, if, if, the, if the laboratory or the uh, manufacturer wants to do it, it's always better. The most controlled, the, the more accurate result. Okay, um, and what is the storage temperature of the kids? It should be storage at four uh, um, degrees. Yes, okay. in the fridge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fridge, all right. Then, um, but it should, uh, sorry, Gabor, but it should right. be a temperate, get to temp, um, room temperate before using it. Uh -huh. So you have to warm up. Okay, so one question is regarding the antibody for the gluten. If it is not R5 uh, is used, then what antibody? 
are it's, going a, to it's, an anti, it's a monoclonal antibody of our own production. Mm -hmm. But uh, compared and uh, with the R5, because we have the R5 mm -hmm. available as well, but we cannot use it in the strips. So, okay, this yeah. is, is our own uh, monoclonal yes. antibody. But the good news is that it will be validated and checked against the R5, so you can expect yeah. the same. Completely, yeah. we can do it because we have the uh, R5 ELISA, uh, we manufacture the R5 ELISA, so we can do the validation compared with this one. Yeah, indeed. All right. Then, uh, could different matrices affect the limit of quantification? Uh, yes, depending on the matrix. It's, if it is a uh, mention of it's a complicated one or different one that the, the validated of the validation report, it may uh, affect the, the limit of detection. So it should be checked case by case. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Then uh, the rapid scan could be taken on site? Yes. Yes, it's, it's going to be a portable device, right? Yes, yes, yes. That's the idea. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and uh -huh. um, how much amount of samples have been taken uh, for the analysis? I think it's uh, you start with uh, one one gram of sample. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have mentioned in the I I don't exactly remember, but it's, I think it's with one gram or one milliliter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much, Christina, for for the answers. And now I encourage everybody. We have nine minutes uh, yeah, left, and and uh, if there is any other questions, please feel free to enter to the chat. Um, we already received quite a lot of uh, interesting questions from you. Thank you very much for your attention and, and asking the questions. And still, if you feel like, we, I think we have time. Oh, yeah. Then, um, does the reading device need software updates? Um, I think not, but I'm not completely sure. I should check this. Because we are validating right now, so uh, um, I'm not I'm not really sure. I should check. Yeah. Probably with new applications uh, coming over time, uh, there should be any update. But yeah, during yeah, the launch, it, yes, yeah. we'll be we will be validating every time that we will launch a new wave of products. The the reader will be validated with a new uh, product. So. Um, uh, you just need to load the the new kits. So, uh, but uh, right now it's uh, we have uh, the completely the new version. So um, I don't know exactly at what moment there will be need uh, um, an update of the software of the uh, of the reader. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks a lot. Then, regarding salary testing, what options uh, uh, are there for salary testing? Okay, so for uh, up to now, as, as far as I know, uh, the almost all the laboratories and uh, customers that I know are using PCR for salary testing. But uh, okay, so um, this is something that we are discussing internally into the company in order to see some possibilities in the future to be able to have some some uh, immune assay or uh, an assay based on um, antibodies for the salary detection. But up to now, uh, most of the labs are using PCR for, for salary. This is something that uh, we would like to include in our projects in the future, but uh, salary is a complicated allergen in order to get good results with immune assays but um, we, we can work on it. We will see the possibilities. Yeah, thanks a lot. Can you give a specific example where ELISA would be more appropriate than, than lateral flow? 
Okay, now I think that there is no difference uh, in, 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 in the case of samples to be used on ELISA or lateral flow. It's more the, uh, the, the kind of results you want to obtain. If you want to, uh, you want to obtain a semi-quantitative result or you want to, uh, to do something uh, to use a very quick technology uh, to be able to use on site, or if you want to make a quantification with the standard curve and uh, um, a different one, but it does not depend of the of the kind of samples. Okay. Is PCR for salary could be used in rinsing water? Um, I guess so, but uh, I, uh, we do not have PCR testing in uh, in uh, uh, kits in uh, in the in, within the group. So uh, probably they 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 can be done, but uh, I have to say that uh, I'm not expert in PCR in this case. But why not? The the PCR is detecting the the DNA, so. Uh, my recommendation uh, for allergen is always an immunosay based uh, technology because it detects the protein and uh, in fact the protein is the which causes yeah. the allergic reaction so uh, from my point of view it's good to um, to know uh, or to detect exactly the protein that is causing the allergic reaction and in addition with an ELISA or, or with a lateral flow device you can uh, you 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 are provided with a result in ppm or pbb so you can compare this with the for example in the case of gluten with the legislated limit of detection uh, in the case of pcr you are getting a number of dna copies so it's not so easy to um, transform these dna copies to um, ppm or pbb so most of the labs use the PCR technology as a confirmatory uh, technique, uh, mostly. Okay, then um, one of our um, participants is asking about uh, sesame and soybean contamination during changeover with non-allergen seed. What precautions uh, majorly and uh, could be so oh, but um, uh, yes this this is something more related with the um, uh, the, the the allergy management itself uh, more than the, with the analysis so uh, uh, my recommendation in order to see exactly how to apply an allergy management in in production site is just to go to the allergen bureau website which um, includes uh, different documents and uh, even there is um, a program where you can uh, check the different steps that you can apply in your own factory in order to uh, be able to control and to avoid this kind of cross contamination between allergens. So uh, just um, I really recommend to go to the Allergen Bureau webpage in order to to see the best way and the the steps to uh, to do in order to avoid this kind of cross contamination. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Christina. It seems we we have just finished with the questions, um, and uh, well, we still have two minutes to go. So for there is. A, time maybe for one last question and it arrived so how will you cooperate with the local European allergen labs supplying their clients with ELISA testing since you will interact directly with their clients um, how do you purpose to handle the situation um, well uh, actually uh, yeah this is a question which uh, which I usually uh, get as well, and uh, thank you very much for asking. So um, we are considered to be a truly independent uh, manufacturing divisions, and uh, and it's uh, absolutely an open and and uh, free access for external customers. So uh, I mean, there is a, there is 
cooperation between the Eurofins laboratory network and us in terms of development and validations and testing. But our kits are, are truly available and uh, we are independent manufacturing divisions uh, working together with many, many external clients worldwide already. Um, sorry, Christina, to jump in if you want to comment on this. Okay, no, it's, it's I get the same word as you. <laughs> I took the liberty of, of answering. Okay, perfect. Uh, it's more sales related. And with that, it seems that we, we just finished our hour. Thank you very much uh, for the attention from the participants. Uh, and thank you very much for a lot of interesting questions. And uh, thank you for your uh, time. And uh, let's keep in touch. And we would love to interact with you in the future. Feel free to reach out to us in uh, in uh, any platform, website, LinkedIn, phone, whatever mean of uh, interaction. So thank you very much. Have a nice rest of the day and uh, talk to you soon. Okay, so thank you all of you to have a nice day. Goodbye. Goodbye, thank you very much, always.